Women's 2023 National Criterion Champ in the UK. A race of two halves. I'm not really going to show much of the first half because it was a massive crash and they neutralised it. Basically, people went out the back, but that was it. Everyone's accelerating, but basically, it's just a zero point showing it. Katie Archibald did stack it. That was about the only thing really uh, note while, um, noteworthy. Sorry. So, going around first corner, I assume you've watched the men's. It's not a mega technical crit. You can see there's some attacks here. Like, people want to be at the front, but no one really does much. Anyway, watch second rider, middle of your screen with a blue helmet. She hooks her left leg, sorry, her arm, and then basically goes across the front wheel. Um, and yeah, causes a massive, massive crash. So if you want to rewatch that, watch second wheel. But anyway, they all start again. Favourite Emma Jeffers, she crashed out. I mean, she was the one who took herself out and everyone else out uh, by overlapping wheels, so not ideal. Um, but yeah, so basically all the favourite, she was out. Meg Barker, probably one of the favourites. Kat Ferguson, Junior, mega strong. Also there, Frankie Wills just on the front, drilling it, but doesn't really achieve anything, just rides on the front a lot. This also happened in the men's race. I didn't quite understand it, but a lot of people just seem to ride on the front a lot. Um, Daz Hansling, who are like a Conti team in the UK, probably the strongest squad, didn't ride as a team at all. Um, they didn't. I didn't really understand their tactics. Again, didn't really make sense. A lot of individual riders rode on the front just to try and get good position. Kat Ferguson's that green kit behind on the track. I'm pretty sure she's going to sign tracks like Fredo as soon as she's first year on a 23, to be honest. Um, and then De Koenig, um also had a team as well, Phoenix, um, with Flora Perkins and um, Millie Cousins. They were like mildly active, but again, there weren't really many team lap tactics. So we watched three laps to go. It was basically just like ride at the front. Um, someone rides at the front quite hard, and then that was about it, really. Um, I think this course didn't really suit. It was kind of weird, like it's technical in some ways, like there's corners, but because it was so, the corner the corners are very like strung out. Being on the front didn't help that much. Like the rubber band effect is decent on a course like this, but it's not mega. So you can see like Pro Noctis are also the red team in red. They have like a defending champion, but I'm not sure she crashed out. I think one of their favorites, Robin Clay, did crash out and she had one Lincoln, which is like a big race in the UK. So again, it was like a lot of favorites. Canyon Sram, Alex Morris is there as well. Strong rider, but again, like not no teammates or anything else. So it's kind of just like this weird fight for position, but no one really took it up enough to like stop people fighting for position. So it was just kind of weird. And then Das Hansen with three people there, you're like, okay, obviously their favorites crashed. Um, but surely they're going to do something, but they kind of just wait here. And to be honest, like no one's dive bombing them. So it's kind of okay. Lacole Rider is just on the front. I don't really understand the tactics. This is where like, just tactics seem to go bananas to me. Um, and I guess it was similar to the men's race. It was just a bit of a boring circuit. Well, the only reason the men's race was mild exciting is because there was a guy off the front. Otherwise it would have been like this, just dull. Um, and it's, you know, it's a bit, bit annoying to say because it should be exciting, a crit chance, but I just think the course was not great. Meg Barker's in the green team inspired kit. That's basically the UK national team. I don't know why they don't race in GB colors, but they always race in the weird green. She's now starting to get to the front, two laps to go. There's also a lot of fight for position. But with no teammates, instead of like, it's kind of a lot more like amateur racing where there is no teammates to bring them up to the front. So everyone's kind of just trying to fight to be on or around the front. People putting in more work than they probably like to be at the front. And two laps to go is probably useful. But this Lacole rider, I just, it's just a bit too much. Like literally on the front for like two laps. Doesn't have a teammate anywhere near her. So I just don't don't get the tactics um, at all. Cat uh, Bugs on the right is moving up as well. Frankie Hall's moving up on the left as well. So people like, you can see the pace isn't really that high, um, but there's no one who's like definitely uh, taking it over. The other team, AWOL Sheo, they also, Charlotte Broughton, who was like probably one of their strong, well, their best sprinter, she also crashed out as well. So they were kind of like, I think may have lost quite a lot of riders because they're also another UK Conti team, which you'd expect them to kind of take control a bit more of. Um, but here you can see Meg Barker's coming to the front and, and doing a lot of work. Um, again, it's like, is this worth it? I don't know, <laughs> Maybe, but I mean, it probably is, but you just do think like in this course, you're just not saving that much energy riding on the front. I guess the other argument would be is like, you know, if you're strong enough, you can just ride on the front and it's not a massive, massive stress. And I think if you look at the sprint, um, the sprint is actually like a really long way to go from that last corner. And I think people didn't realize that as much. I think it may also be a headwind sprint as well because it looked quite slow. And so there was the really the fight for the last corner, but I think in, rea in reality, you want to be second or third. You can see Amy Perry moving on the right hand side. It's actually a pretty mega move. Managed to dive bomb more, well, not dive bomb, but just moves up on the outside and then slides onto second wheel around this corner, which is actually kind of where you want to be. 
I reckon third wheel, second wheel is probably when you want to be into that last corner. But again, there's not mega amounts of places to move up. Meg Barker now is just really whacking it on the front very, um, and it starts to actually string out quite a lot, to be honest. Like if you look four or five wheels back, no one is moving up now just because it's so fast. And so realistically, that was your only chance to move up was on the straight or have a teammate pull you up on the outside. But as we mentioned before, not much teammates. You can see Maddie Leach on the left moving up a lot. On her own, this is a big effort in the wind. And then when she comes to the front, again, she just takes over. Um, and this is actually the key defining move. You can look at third wheel now, is Amy Harriman. She then drops it between Kat Ferguson and then loses the wheel, obviously gassed from the previous effort. This then kind of lets a gap go. You can see Das Hansling can't close it as Maggie Leach is going full. Comes around now. We're coming into like basically one of the last corners. Maggie Leach first wheel. Um, and I think there's one more corner onto the, onto the final finish straight. And you think here, Kat Ferguson, probably third wheel, ideal place. Meg Bark lets a massive gap go, actually. And I think, oh no, she, maybe she's messed it up. But actually, when she starts to sprint, she sprints into the draft um, and then just carries way more speed past everyone else. Uh, Kat Ferguson's trying to come on the left-hand side. But again, you can see she's already sat down. This is like a mega 20-second long sprint. Um, and to be honest, I thought Kat Ferguson might have it on the line. It was pretty close, but Meg, Meg Barker managed to get it just. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty good sprint, to be honest. Like, quite tactical, especially with no teammates. Uh, but apart from that, probably not the most most exciting race I've ever seen. That's kind of something to the men's. It's a bit of a shame that the circuit was not as mega as it could have been. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.